Hello, I'm Tom Nelson and I have been a wine bottle product photographer for more than seven years now. I'm creating this video because I'm often asked, so what's the big deal about photographing a wine bottle? What actually should one look for when evaluating a wine bottle product shot? We all look at photographed images of bottles all the time. And like tasting wines, it's easy to say if we like an image or a wine or don't like an image or a wine. What's hard is to describe why we like or dislike an image or a bottle. So let's discuss some of the technical properties of a wine bottle photo. So here are the 10 things that I check uh, for when doing a bottle shot or evaluating a bottle shot. Uh, one, does the bottle look good against different backgrounds? Two, is the label or the labels on straight and are they centered? Three, is the cap print and or the logo centered? Uh, four, is there any lens distortion? Five, are there visible seams on the glass and or cap? Six, does the lighting look realistic? Does it give the bottle a three-dimensional appearance? Seven, are there edges on the bottle smooth? Eight, is there dust or is there the right amount of dust on the glass? Nine, is there unwanted print molded on the bottle? Normally this can be seen at the very, very base of the bottle. And 10, are the colors accurate? Uh, check and check the, uh, the white balance of the image. So how does the bottle look against various different backgrounds? Uh, this is against a transparent background, but let's turn on a white background. And we'll see that it blends quite well with a white background. The white highlights seem to uh, pick up the white background and it, it looks quite good. But we go to a gray, a neutral gray highlight, and we see that there's a little haloing effect that's coming up. This is being picked up from the softbox, the lights, or whatever was around this bottle when it was photographed. Let's go now to a black background, and we'll see that this halo effect is even more pronounced. And again, it's a personal preference thing, but having this white flash and this frosting down at the bottom uh, is not something that I find uh, very attractive in a wine bottle photograph. Let's go to a colored background. We'll go to this bluish. And again, having this white halo against a, a blue environment seems to be quite unnatural. Maybe if in post, if uh, the white fringing or this white halo was tinted more towards the blue or a complementary color towards the blue, it might look better. Uh, so what's the alternative to this? Well, let's take a look at what a bottle would look like without that halo effect or without that fringing. And again, what happens is it, it gives you more of a contrast against that background. So this is a bottle without that halo effect against a blue background. Here it is against a black background. When I reduce this, it picked up a little bit of white here, which needs to be cleaned up in post, but it's quite easy to do. Again, against a gray background, very nice, really good contrast, I think, separates itself well from the background. And against a white background, uh, the same thing. So again, it's all personal preference, but there, you do want to check your bottles against various different backgrounds, primarily because there is a stark difference on when a bottle looks against a transparent background, against a white back, gray, or different colors. Next, I like to check to see if the label is centered on the bottle. And the way to actually do that is to go into Photoshop and take a zoom in a little bit and just take the guide bars and see if the label is actually vertical. And this one is almost perfect and then take it from the top and go to the corners of the label because it'll have a little bit of curvature there because of the curvature of the bottle. And one more, and we can see that this label is nicely centered uh, or nicely um, horizontal and vertical on the bottle. When it comes to centering though, if you notice, you can see with your naked eye, 
that it's a little bit to the left of center here. Uh, it's, there's a um, narrower gap on the left and a wider gap on the right. So that needs to be adjusted in post. Okay, step three is to check the cap. Uh, sometimes caps are plain, but sometimes they have print or logos on them, as in this example. And we do want to make sure that if there is print or logo, that it is nicely centered on that cap and looks proper. Okay, next is to take a look and see if there's any lens distortion. And the easiest way to do this is to just go into the Photoshop's lens correction filter and show you what a distorted bottle might look like. Now let's blow this up just a hair to make it a little easier to see. Oh, that's probably a little too much. Okay, that looks good. All right, uh, first is taking a look at vertical perspective. This is what happens if we bottle is actually tilted to or fro from the lens and you can see how it distorts the bottle. So that's one, the vertical perspective should be checked. Then again, the horizontal, if the bottle is tilted away or from the left to the right, you can take a look at that, make sure that that's correct. Then also check for fringing. And fringing is where you get that magenta, green, yellow, blue edges around the bottle. Normally you'll find that on the print on the label. And again, that can sometimes be um, fixed in, uh, in post. And then again, distortion, we can take a look. And this is the pin cushioning effect that you might get. In other words, if you're using a wide angle lens, it'll get fatter in the middle of the bottle, for example. And then of course, it'll get and get it'll curve inward if you get another one. So you want the edges nice and straight on the bottle, and that's something again to check for. Now it's time to check to see if there's any seams. So we zoom in And on the glass here, I don't see any seams, which is good. Uh, we can actually go up to the cap though as well. And we can see that the cap seam is right here, going right through the highlight. So that needs to be removed in post. Next, I check to see if the lighting is actually realistic or not. Uh, in this environment, obviously this halo effect is realistic based on the environment. It was sitting on a white uh, mat of some sort, so the white reflection is from the bottom. Uh, it has a soft box on the right, which is giving this particular strip. But to be critical of this image, if you also notice, there's a bright white light going on the cap, but then it just completely disappears and doesn't show up on the bottle. Again, in a realistic world, that just doesn't happen. So one of the things to check is make sure that the lighting of the bottle is actually realistic and, uh, and, and looks like um, a photograph as opposed to something that was put together in some sort of digital factory. Okay, it's time to check the edges of the bottle. And again, in Photoshop, what we can do is just zoom in and take a look, and I personally like to do this against a black background, if I can, uh, or against various different backgrounds, maybe even a blue background. And what you wanna check is to see that that edge is nice and smooth and evenly cut, and there aren't any jagged edges or jaggies in that particular edge. And you can see this bottle has been separated from its background very nicely, that the edges are very smooth even all the way down to here are some mold marks here all the way down to around the the marks there in the little indentation down here it's a nice job okay it's time to check for dust and dust is a personal preference uh, it's hard to say whether zero dust is perfect or there should be some dust to make the bottle look realistic again has a lot to do with what you're actually doing with that particular image. You can see a little bit of dust here on this particular bottle, 
And I personally think it makes the bottle look realistic, but too much dust makes the bottle look dirty. So again, it's something to check for and make sure that you communicate with your photographer what you're actually looking for. Should be noted though that when you shrink a bottle or reduce the size of the bottle normally for view in browsers and on the internet, most of that dust will actually disappear. Uh, the dust will always pot only show up when the bottle is actually enlarged. You may want to check to see if there's unwanted printing or artifacts on the bottle. For example, on this image, there's these mold marks down here in the bottom right hand corner. And also there's some, even though it's light, you can see some printing here on the left hand side of the bottle. This can be easily removed in post using Photoshop or another image editor. And finally, we want to check and see that the colors are accurate. This is the hardest part because no two monitors actually display the colors uh, of an image the same. So trying to check the colors visually through the use of uh, looking at the image on a monitor is almost impossible. The best way to do this is to make sure that the, the uh, bottle is photographed using a raw file format and a gray card so that the images can be digitally balanced or the white balance can be digitally done using Photoshop. And this is the way to make sure that the image itself, the digital image itself, has accurate colors. So that's it. Let me put the list up one more time so you can review. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Uh, thanks for staying to the end of the video. Hope you uh, found this to be helpful. Uh, hit like if you do like this video. And uh, for all you photographers, uh, good shooting out there. Bye now.